Kia ora everyone and welcome back to Adair Cottage's vlog. This episode I have an endearing heartwarming story about some little knitted mice called, well these two are called uh, Melrose and Melvin that I knitted for my gorgeous new grandson Bodie. Now come with me on this adventure to find out about all their adventures that they had. But first of all, let's meet Melvin and Melrose. So, there we have little Melrose and little Melvin. I hope you enjoy their adventures as much as I have. The other week when I was at the uh, op shopping with my two sisters, I picked up a little pattern for, for a dollar and I had lots of scrap wool so I decided for our young new baby that's been born I'd make a couple of mice. Now these are them pre-faces. One has a typically boy stance I believe. Look at the way he has his legs and the little girl which is, I've called them Melrose and Melvin. Uh, so Melrose is obviously the one that is sitting like a little girl and Melvin is sitting like a male mouse. This is pre-faces. I've used up all the scrap wool that I've had, well, not all the scrap wool, but of the colours that sort of I thought would look all right. Uh, and I love little Melvin's little dungaree overalls. I haven't obviously sewn in all this. He's got a little pocket in here. And I've made Melrose's little dress with, um, I had a bit of, I didn't, ran out of red wool, so I put a little bit of a sparkle in it. <laughs> I wasn't going to put these on uh, my YouTube channel, but I think they look rather cute. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I'd like to introduce to you Melrose and Melvin Mouse. So I've just finished embroidering their faces and I've given little Melrose some little whiskers. Look how she crosses her legs very daintily. And then you see Melvin and my husband said, oh, he's got a beard. And I said, no, that's his whiskers. <laughs> so um, I decided to make Melrose whiskers a little more daintily. <laughs> and look at the way Melvin sits. <laughs> I like his little pocket. He's got a little pocket in here. See the little pocket in his dungarees? So he, I suppose he can put his hammer in there or whatever other tool he's, he's got. Oh my gosh, since I finished making Melrose and Melvin mouse last night and since they have discovered their, they, they have a nose, a mouth and ears, all I've been he hearing last night is Melrose squeaking in my head, I want to go on adventure. We have to go on adventure before we get packed up in our luggage and taken off to Australia. So they think that they're Kiwis, but actually they're half Kiwis, half Australian, these little mice now. So I have decided I will take them off and discover their heritage before they head off to Australia. So today I am taking both Melrose and Melvin over to meet their uh, great-grandmother, uh, Auntie June. Now, on the 1st of June this year... Auntie June will be 104 years old. So today, myself and my two sisters are going over to visit Auntie June. So I'm letting Melrose and Melvin come on a treat to come out and visit her. So have a look. These two little mischievous mice sitting at the door, patiently waiting with the keys in hand, 
waiting to go on the adventure. So, uh, what do you two think? Are you excited? Squeak, 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 squeak. I take it that's a yes. Okay, so off they go today. I've just walked past after feeding the outdoor animals and all I can hear, as soon as I open up the door, squeak, 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 squeak. And I come over to ask what they're going on about and they say, well, hurry up. Will you hurry up and have your shower? Will you hurry up and have your breakfast? We want to go and see Auntie June. Oh my goodness, I'm almost regretting giving them a nose and eyes and a mouth because that's all I've been hearing all night long, their consistent chatter. I'm looking at the clock and I've been doing my Duolingo Japanese and I've been thinking, oh gosh, my younger sister's going to be here soon. If I don't hurry up and hop in that shower, Melrose and Melvin will be very disappointed. Oh, I thought I had some of my breakfast in my teeth. I thought I had a chia seed stuck in there. So I, I better jump into the shower uh, so that they won't be disappointed. And hopefully my sisters won't be disappointed either. Anyway, I'm going to put away my breakfast dishes and jump into the shower and get ready to go and see Auntie June. So cute. And they've got a pocket. Look, he's got a pocket on his dungarees. Oh, yeah. A little pocket. They both got holes for their tails. Oh my god, look at his whiskers. His feet are a bit more bushier than here. Well, Cunny said, Cunny said, has he got a beard? And yeah, I said, like no. I no. Like and so too. I said, oh, okay, well, I better not have um, Melrose with a beard. So I did her with um, just a yeah, couple she, of little he strands. looks like a beard. <laughs> I don't know if they're husband and wife or, or their um, brother or sister. Yeah, but I suppose Baby Bodie will decide what Baby Bodie wants them as. But anyway, they're going on the adventure to go see the Auntie June, great Auntie June. They're ready to go on their big adventure, but I'm going to have to buckle them in, I think, because Rachel just plonked them in, and they might go flying. And we couldn't have that. We couldn't have them departing. Departing. Before they even get started in this journey. See, oh, better put their arms out or else they're going to get stuck. There you go. And they can sit in next to Big Sister when we pick her up. But they both look a little bit worse for wear, but Nicola's about to hop in the car yeah. soon, so she'll look after them. Yeah. Now you two behave while we go in and buy Auntie June a box of chocolates and a card for her birthday. No squeaking from you, please. We've got them all ready to go and see Auntie June. They're very excited. I can hear the squeaking from here. <laughs> we also, I also bought to show you. Well, we got to show you. I made some little mice. I've got a. Um, it's Angela talking, mm -hmm. and I, for my daughter Briar, had a baby a week ago. Who's it? Briar did. My daughter Briar. Oh. A baby called Bodie. Oh, hello. And so I made them some mice. This one oh. here is called Melrose Mouse. She came oh. to visit you today. Oh, hello. And I'll show you Melvin Mouse. Mm. We've got Melvin as well. This is Melvin Mouse. Oh, this is so lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Give you a little kiss. Oh. <laughs> I'll get Melrose to give you a kiss as well. <laughs> Lovely kids. Yeah, yeah. Here's another mouthful, Auntie Jane. Mm. Do you want some more chocolate? Chocolate? Yes. Do you want some more? Oh, goodness gracious. Oh. <laughs> How have you been keeping, Auntie June? Mm -hmm. How have you been? I've been pretty good. Been pretty good? Mm -hmm. Pretty good for nearly 104. Mm. What are you going to do for your birthday? Not sure now. Not sure? No. No. What have you been up to? Running away. <laughs> Hiding down the bay. Have you? Mm. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> do you remember the old gramophone? The old gramophone? Yes. 
Yeah, that was good fun. I bet it was. Mm. What was your favourite record? Oh, all the good records. Hallelujah, Hallelujah I'm a bum. bum. Hallelujah, bum again. Hallelujah, give us a hand out to revive us again. I knew you were going to say that one, Auntie June. I knew it. <laughs> and the other side was good too. Knock, knock. Hello, mum. Hello, bum. Mm. <laughs> How does it go, Nicola? Oh, I can't remember, but something like mm. that. And do you remember the poem that that dad, that your brother Bill used to do? Um, Hi, good chickadee chick chilloo. Do you remember that, that one? Hi, good chickadee chick On an Indian Isle. Hi, good chickadee chick chilloo. Oh, chick 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 this, this, this is a, this is a, and I go, I go, chickadee chick chilloo. I forget the word. What about <laughs> on an Indian Isle there lived, lived a man, man could his nickety, name was Nickety Ripotan. His mm. head was big and his feet were small and this little man mm. couldn't, walk couldn't walk at all. At all. At all. Hi, good chickadee, chig chaloo. Hi, good chickadee, chig chaloo. His head, head was big and his feet were small and this little man, man couldn't, couldn't walk, walk at all. all. Do you know where that story came from, Auntie June? Mm? Do, you, do, you know? do you know where that story came from, that little um, jingle? No. I think it came from your father. I think your father taught it to Dad and you when you were little. Mm. Mm. I like Dad. He's a nice man. I'm oh, glad he was a nice that's man. lovely. Yeah. I bet your mum was a nice mum too. Mm. Yeah. What was the best part of your childhood? The thing that you enjoyed the most about your childhood? They loved me. Yeah. Aww. That's that's fantastic, and isn't it? A good dad. Yeah. A good granddad. Yeah. I wish I had known him. Mm. Me too. Yeah, I wish I'd met him. Me too. Him. I think he only really, Frith was the only one. I think Frith was a, a toddler when he passed away, I think. 1950 something, wasn't it? Mm. Um, I remember you telling me that James. I remember you telling me that James made the riding habits for the Queen. Is she? I remember you telling me that. Yes. My one. Yes, James used to do the leather, and he was. Tailor. Oh, he was a tailor. Mm. Ah. I used to go to another man who made shoes. Made my shoes for me. Oh. And that's because you had special built up shoes, wasn't it, Auntie mm. June? And was that because of polio, was it? Why, why did you have to wear the built up shoes, Auntie June? I don't know. Because you couldn't do the sports and things, could you? No. Did you have polio? Was it polio? That, is that why? No, that was, no, I can't remember what it my was. My grandfather. Oh. I don't know what he did. He made shoes for me, I think. Oh, that's lovely. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful sunny day today, Auntie June. Isn't it lovely? And in about two weeks, you're going to be 104. Mm. How did that I'm happen? Outside in the sun. You might sit outside in the sun on your birthday. If I get up, I might get up. That was not be nice. Mm -hmm. How did you become 104? How did that happen? Just climbed out the window. Uh, <laughs> well, your mum lived a long time, didn't she? Winifred lived for a long time. She was 90-something. 90 90 something, yeah, Winifred was, was 96 a long or 97, time. didn't she? Wasn't she? I don't know. Family genes, the genetics. Hmm. <laughs> What's your favourite food, Auntie June? Ice cream. Ice cream oh, too. Just like, like your Dad. brother. Ice cream and chocolate. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Is that enough of a visit or do you want us to stay? I've had enough. Too. You've had enough? Can we get a photo with you, Auntie June? Can the three of us get a photo with you? Mm. Did, you about... did you want the last little bit of your chocolate? There's a little bit left. Here you are. Can we organise to get a photo with you, Auntie June? Mm. Okay. Hope they're well behaved for their lunch. They're about to have something to eat. Do you think they're going to be well behaved? They look like little sweet little mice, don't they? Hi. 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 Hi.
Auntie June and uh, I think they'll have a little bit of an afternoon kip they're signing off over and out for tonight Melrose and Melvin are very excited to announce the arrival and birth of we Mallory now we Mallory is off to start her adventure with a young lady called Caitlin who fell in love with her mum and dad and uh, she's remaining very quiet today though because she had a big adventure yesterday and that was being born and so today she's going to chill out with mum and dad and get ready for her uh, trip to meet Caitlin in the near future. There's something special about getting a break away and going on a few days uh, holiday. So we're up at our batch up in the Bay of Islands in New Zealand and it's absolutely beautiful and, um, to just pack up a few clothes, take the dog and get, get a few days break. I have brought with me these masses. They're sitting up on the mantelpiece, and uh, we have also bought Melvin, and I'm just making Maxwell. So these are Maxwell's clothes, his little dungarees, and uh, soon Maxwell will have a new home with Miss Gorgeous. Mallory. They're off down for a quick walk to the beach. Are you coming, Macy? Macy's coming. Oh, the sun's shining. Oh, it's gorgeous, beautiful. Just how superb is this? It's low tide. She's down there ready to go for a walk. It's just magical. My grandparents retired up here, my mother, and uh, we get dolphins in this harbour. I just love it. It's one of my happy places. Gorgeous big Predakawa tree behind us. Here's Macy. <laughs> Macy's wanting to have a 
throw the ball. We're going to go for a walk in a minute. With the ball. Come on, Macy. Come on, Macy. Come on, in you come. Come on. We'll go get the ball in a minute. Look at this majestic Putakawa tree behind us. <laughs> I still have to refine my uh, videoing skills. It's quite hard for this, for me, <laughs> but I think I'm getting better. A new star is born. Meet Maxwell and Mallory. Now Melrose has a big smile on her face. She's pretty happy to meet Maxwell. And I think Melvin is also extremely happy to meet Maxwell and Mallory. And they're having a great old time on holiday. Especially Melrose and Melvin because they're off on a big new adventure when they hop on the jet plane off to Australia and they will be saying goodbye to little Maxwell and Mallory when they've got a new adventure with Caitlin and Cameron. Mallory and Maxwell are off to their new home tomorrow, aren't they, Silver? Are you unhappy about it, Silver? Are you unhappy? I think Silver's unhappy that they're finding a new home. Anyway, Maxwell and Mallory are off to their new home, but before we head off, Maxwell was, was uh, choosing some new little buttons for his glad rags, for his dungarees. And Mallory was helping. She found a pretty purple uh, set of buttons, but Maxwell said, no, I don't want purple. I want gold to go with the gold trim on my dungarees. So there you go, they're the buttons. And tomorrow, Maxwell and Mallory will be heading off to their new home before uh, Melvin and Melrose hop on a big jet plane off to Australia. What an exciting life for a mouse. What do you think, fish? Would you rather be a mouse or a fish? Hmm. I think they're quite happy being fish. And Silver obviously doesn't really know if Silver likes being a cat or a dog because Silver is hanging out with the dog food and the dog toys. Hmm. Okay, Silver. Okay. So before Mallory and Maxwell head off tomorrow to their new home, Maxwell now has little cute little um, buttons on his dungarees but I'm writing our newest blog and both of them have become quite nosy they want to see what I'm doing so Maxwell's hanging off the laptop as you can see and Mallory is trying to have a peek while Macy can't even be bothered to open up her eyes. Mallory and Maxwell are actually very, very cute. <laughs> I didn't realise that um, Maxwell was sneaking around, skulking around, but actually Maxwell wanted to be close to me doing my blog. He was a bit lonely sitting over there by himself. <laughs> Maxwell has quite a mischievous streak about him. While I was trying to do my blog, 
he jumped in front and pushed me out the way. I think he just wanted to show off his fancy new dungarees that he's got. But anyway, I need to push him out the way so I can persevere with my blog. Mallory and Maxwell have been up since a crack of dawn. They're sitting in excitedly in anticipation waiting for their uh, new grandma to come and pick them up to find their way to Caitlin and Cameron. Can you see Maxwell's big smile on his face? He looks pretty happy. Melrose is a little bit more mischievous. She's hiding in the corner there. But they have been squeaking all morning saying, hurry up, hurry up. When is she going to be here? When is she going to be here? Well, in another hour, she should be here. Kitty and I are very excited. We're off to Australia to meet our new muku and uh, to catch up with all of our girls and, uh, and Lily's partner. Uh, can't wait. It's super exciting. We're off to the airport now. We're at the New Zealand lounge ready to jet off very shortly to meet our gorgeous little new grandchild and sitting very patiently is our gorgeous Melvin and Melrose. They both look pretty excited, I think. Look at dear sweet Melrose and Melvin. They look so happy, don't they? They look so excited. I think they're very happy to be in their new home. I'm pretty sure they're checking out the competition. Aren't they? Checking out the competition. Yes, I'm talking to you. Where's your, where's your cohort? the cohort. Finally we arrived and Melrose and Melvin got to meet their new baby friend. He absolutely loved them. Thank you for joining me on this special journey. It's been a joy to share these moments with you. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more heartwarming stories from a deer cottage. Until next time, take care.